Hi, I'm Carl. In this video, we're going to have a look at questions 44 to 48 of section 3 of the Purple Booklet. Questions 44 and 45 um, are about oxen, and I've copied out the diagram here. Um, and I've drawn on a couple of points where the lines cross, because the first question asks, which of the following propositions is most supported by the figure in relation to externally applied oxen concentrations between uh, these two values here? And it says about whether or not there are points at which the root stimulation are equal to each other. So stimulation is measured here on the y-axis, and we're just looking to see where the lines cross over. And for A, it says there are two oxen concentrations at which stem and bud stimulation are equal to each other. So that's where the lines are going to cross. And we can see there's only one here. Those lines only cross one, so it's not going to be A. For B, we can use the same logic to work out that the stem and root stimulations are only equal once um, here. And then finally for C, there are two oxygen concentrations which bud and root stimulation are equal to each other. We can see here it only happens once. So that means that the answer for number 44 has to be D, that there is only one concentration for each pair of organs at which the two organs are equally stimulated. For question 45 then, it asks, which of the following best explains why a plant stem bends towards the light? And I'm just going to do a quick recap about how oxen works. So if we have the sun here, not very well drawn, but we have um, a bit of a stem. The side that is um, exposed to the light will be lighter, and then of course there's a shaded side over here. Oxen acts on the shaded side of the stem uh, on this side. And it causes more cell division so that this bit of the stem, only this portion, gets larger. And if that line gets longer and the other one stays shorter, you get a bending of the stem towards the light and it increases the surface area which is exposed to the light. Um, so that means that, if you, you might have already known this, but oxygen activity is always going to be relatively greater on the unlit side of the stem and that's why the answer is B. Question 46 to 48 are about chemistry, so we'll go down here and I've written out the equations that are given. It's about calcium oxalate, which is a major component of kidney stones. We're told that a typical sample of kidney fluid has a pH of 8.2 and a concentration of calcium ions of 1.5 millimoles. Question 46 asks, what is the minimum concentration of oxalate ions needed to form kidney stones in typical kidney fluid? Well, we're given all the information we need and we were looking at how um, oxalic acid, which is this, dissociates two protons because it's diprotic. It asks uh, what the minimum concentration of oxalate ions is, and this equation shows the formation um, of calcium oxalate, which is here. We know that there is the K number for this reaction and we know the concentration of calcium ions uh, that's associated with that. So let's remember what this KSP um, refers to. The KSP, of course, is going to be the concentration of the calcium ions multiplied by the concentration of the oxalate ions, which is what we need to work out. And given we have a, a number for this, it shouldn't be too difficult. So the, the value for calcium ions we're given is 1.5 millimolar. Now of course this is in molar so we need to convert that to millimolar so we add a 10 to the minus 3 on it and then we multiply that by the concentration sorry of the oxalate ion which is this here and what we need to do then is divide through by this number on both sides so the concentration of what we're looking for, which is this oxalate ion, is going to be 3 times 10 to the minus 3 divided by 1.5 times 10 to the minus 3, sorry, to the minus 9 up here. And then that, of course, gives us 2 times 10 to the minus 6. And that answer is therefore going to be, for number 46, is going to be D. Question 47 asks, drinking strong antacids to relieve indigestion produces kidney fluid that's more alkaline than usual, or kidney stones are more likely to occur under these conditions. Okay, so looking at the equations up here, let's think about what's happening. 
if the kidney fluid is more alkaline than usual, then um, you get lower concentration of these hydrogen ions on both of these equations, but I'll just draw on one for simplicity's sake. And if you have a lower concentration of hydrogen ions, then it drives the position of equilibrium of these two equations to the right-hand side to replace them. And that means that there's going to be a higher concentration of oxalate ions, meaning that there are more available for this reaction so that more of these solid kidney stones are formed. Therefore, the answer for number 47 is going to be A, that yes, at a higher pH, a higher concentration of oxalate ions will form. Question 48 then asks, active transport removes some of the calcium ions from the kidney so that they can be used elsewhere. In a kidney that contains a kidney stone, removing some of the calcium ions will have what effect? Right, well, let's go up to the equations again and think about what this might have. I'll get rid of some of these arrows so that we can think about what would happen. So decreasing the concentration of calcium ions, which is what's happening here through this active transport, sort of has the same effect. We're causing a shift in uh, the position of equilibrium. And if we're getting um, more of these oxalate ions produced, then that shifts the position of equilibrium for both of these in this direction as well. And if it's moving in this direction from the right-hand side to the left-hand side, as more of these are produced and will react with the excess hydrogen ions that are there, um, the hydrogen ion concentration will decrease. And that will mean that there's going to be an increase in the overall pH of the kidney fluid, meaning that the answer to number 48 is A. So those were some questions on auxin and on uh, some equilibriums and how that affects the kidney. I hope that helped. Thanks for watching.